Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and today we have a tier list ranking of the campaign difficulty for all factions with a 190 start date in Total War Three Kingdoms. Now, Creative Assembly has their own difficulty recommendation for each faction ranging from easy to very hard, and we'll be using the same scale here for the purpose of this tier list. Now, as with all tier lists on this channel, these rankings are a reflection of my personal opinion and experience with the game, even though I tried my best to rate these difficulties from the perspective of the average player. And since I mainly play on Romance Mode, these rankings will also be a reflection of Romance Mode rather than Records Mode. So getting started with Tall Tall's Faction, I kind of agree with CA's ranking of easy, because in terms of court management, diplomatic options, and early game opponents, it doesn't get any easier. Tall Tall also has a ton of freedom when it comes to where one might want to expand, as going south to take advantage of his faction unique rice building, to max out faction-wide replenishment makes the game really easy. Unit variety and quality are both top of the charts, assuming you own the Fates Divided DLC, as the Qingzhou units are powerhouses of the early game. There are also numerous built-in events to gain powerful characters in the mid to late game. But there are two main drawbacks that makes me shift Cao Cao's difficulty to normal rather than easy. First, his faction mechanic is one of the more complicated ones in the game, which might stump first-time players or those who are inexperienced with playing as Cao Cao. Second, while his starting location offers a ton of flexibility in terms of expansion path, it is also wide open to attack from all sides, and for players who might not be on top of the diplomacy game, they might find themselves overstretched and vulnerable to attack even in the early game. So at the end of the day, I think Cao Cao is extremely overpowered and easy faction to play, for experienced players, while newer players might still find him a bit challenging, which is why I put his campaign difficulty as normal. Now moving on to Yuan Shao's faction, which CA ranked as normal, I have to strongly disagree with this ranking. The only thing that's easy about Yuan Shao's early game is that most of your early fights are against the Han Empire, but your economy is extremely strained from the titles that Yan Liang and Ventual are holding. And the court situation is not going to get any better as you will soon confederate Han Fu's faction. So in order to get your court and economy under control, there are some tough choices to be made as Yuan Shao's captain retinue mechanic takes time to ramp up, both in terms of lineage points and the three missions that must be completed as soon as possible in order to make fielding captain retinue's an economically sound decision. On top of all this, your mid-game opponents in Gong Sun Zan and Zhang Yan are on opposite fronts, and most of the land near your starting location are farmlands, which makes very little income. So it'd be very difficult for you to field multiple armies to answer both fronts. But it's not all doom and gloom, as once you get the captain retinue missions completed and stacked up some lineage, which is rather easy to do, the captain retinues themselves become quite powerful and cost effective. And for those who own the Fates Divided DLC, Yuan Shao has quite a few good late game options in terms of faction unique units. And once the North is united, you have a relatively safe base of operation to expand from. Now the only issue here is the North is not a great starting location as you're far from most sources of copper, which is vital for corruption reduction. But at least you have plenty of food to use in diplomacy and the option of creating vassals from your rather useless commanderies to get a steady income from trade and tributes. So with all these reasons combined, I consider Yuan Shao's campaign difficulty to be hard. Continuing with Konron, we have CA's ranking as hard, which mostly comes from the early game event where a large yellow turban army attacks Beihai. And with the changes to Huang Shao's faction, where all his units gain stock, Koron really has a tough time dealing with these early game neighbors, especially for players who are not used to utilizing generals as screens for his powerful faction unique crossbow units. But assuming one survives the early onslaught from the Yellow Turbans, Koron's campaign does become quite straightforward as his faction unique trade mechanic is rather simple to understand and has really no downsides. And of course, Koro has the Fury of Beihai, which is the strongest range unit in the game. And given how dominant range units are for the campaign, Koro will eventually steamroll in the mid to late game as crossbows do not fall off given their armor piercing damage. The starting location is not great considering you have strong neighbors in Liu Bei and Cao Cao that are hard to deal with, and none of the commanderies are particularly lucrative. But there's always the option to sail south and start from scratch in Danyang, so all things considered, I think CA actually nailed this one as I agree with Koron's campaign difficulty as hard. 
Next up, we have Taotian, which, to be fair, is a faction that I have never played a full campaign on. But if we consider his displaced population mechanic and his two trash tier faction unique units, and his old age, assuming we're not playing on timeless mode, Taotian's faction is not easy to play. In the early game, you're forced to fend off Taotian and his schemes, and the lands around you are food rich but resource poor. So unless you're open to exploiting a diplomatic marriage confederating Liu Bei by adopting Lady Mi, I actually feel like Taotian's campaign difficulty is actually very hard compared to CA's ranking of just hard. Then moving on to another faction that suffers from a poor faction unique unit, we have Yuan Shu, who CA has classified as very hard. While his early game opponent of He Yi, Liu Biao, and Cao Cao are very difficult to deal with, Yuan Shu does have a surprising amount of diplomatic flexibility as long as you're willing to pay for legitimacy as those deals not only grant you your precious faction unique resources, but they also are a great way to secure temporary alliances with your stronger neighbors. Of course, if you forgo this and ignore his faction mechanic, then the campaign will get extremely difficult. Conversely, if the player take a more active approach to diplomacy, then you can actually jumpstart Yuan Shu's prestige gain and hit the duke rank within the first 10 turns or so. Then combine this with the new prestige rank up system, Yuan Shu becomes quite powerful and can easily become the first faction to hit the king rank and thus transition away from those weak faction unique units into imperial units for the mid to late game. Overall, the diplomacy system might not be the easiest tool for many new players to utilize, but I still think CA's ranking of very hard is simply too harsh and that Yuan Shu's campaign difficulty is hard at best. Moving on to Liu Bei, which is ranked as normal by CA, we have a faction that relies entirely on the strength of their generals in the early game, as Liu Bei starts the game out with no land, but has the strongest army, with the strongest combination of generals who are already oath thorns with each other. This alone makes Liu Bei's faction easy, as the oath thorn mechanic protects you from messing up, as even if you get one of the three brothers killed in battle, the other two would just heal and get stronger for the rest of the fight. Sadly, Liu Bei's faction never got a rework and the militia-focused nature of the campaign will make the mid-game rather difficult, but the E-Archers are not terrible and there are ample talented generals such as Zhao Yun, Xu Shu, Zhuge Liang, and Pang Tong that will join the faction, which ultimately makes Liu Bei's campaign difficulty easy in my opinion. Next up, we have Gong Sun Zan, which CA also ranked as normal, which I disagree with as Gong Sun Zan has one of the best starting locations for new inexperienced players as you can literally corner camp without the drawbacks of looters as the pirate event is bugged and does not trigger. On top of that, he has an easy to understand and rather useful faction mechanic where he gets extra administrators, which can help new players who are unfamiliar with the corruption anti-snowball mechanic in the game to survive the mid-game without even noticing the impact of corruption in most of their commanderies due to the numerous administrators available to Gong Sun Zan. The only thing that might be difficult for Gong Sun Zan is the early battles with Yuan Shao, but given that you have the luxury of a one front war and a fairly strong faction unique unit and Zhao Yun's help on top of that, the campaign difficulty still feels like easy to me. Moving on, we have Sun Jian, which CA has rated as normal, and I agree, as well a ton of experienced players constantly recommend Sun Jian's campaign for beginners, Due to the easy colonization of the South, those same experienced players forget the pain that is Liu Biao. Sun Jian probably has one of the tougher early game fights in the game, especially if you want to keep the Imperial Seal, but once you survive the war with Liu Biao, the rest of the game is on cruise control, and while his faction unique units are not the strongest, they have instant mustering, which allows a lot of flexibility, especially in emergency defenses, and once Sun Tzu comes of age, even the weakest shot cavalry unit become gods with double the charge bonus. So overall, I feel like Sun Jian's campaign difficulty is normal, only because the initial war with Liu Bao can be quite challenging, especially for new players, as nothing is more frustrating than an endless wave of Jin infantry that just would not rout. Then up next, we have Dong Zhuo, which CA has rated as hard, and once again, I have to agree, as well, the faction mechanic is probably one of the more intensive ones in the game, as you have to constantly use the intimidation in order to not waste it, and you do start out at war with numerous factions, you still have one of the more powerful rosters at the beginning of the game, with the likes of Lü Bu, Dong Zhuo, Zhang Liao, and so much more. 
While the West is no longer as safe as it once was with the looter mechanics and the river no longer offer trade routes due to the shallows, the northwestern corner of the map is still resource rich with horse pastures and silk markets. Now probably one of the hardest moments in the game for Dongzhuo's campaign is when Dongzhuo dies of old age, as intimidation will immediately tank to zero. But with ample planning and rebel farming setups utilizing a high tax rate and the public order issues that comes from it, the campaign can be made quite easy given how intimidation can be spit in diplomacy which allows Dong Zhuo one extra tool to exploit the all-powerful diplomacy functions in Total War Three Kingdoms. But considering how these mechanics are rather complicated and how most of the map hates you, I feel like hard is a fair rating for Dong Zhuo's campaign difficulty. Now moving on, we have Liu Biao, who is blessed with a strong early game faction unique unit, but cursed with the inability to rapidly expand, as his faction mechanic limits the number of counties he can hold. CA has his campaign rate is hard, and once again, I have to agree, as most Total War players are playing the game to fight and expand, but with Liu Biao, you can't do that, as you must prioritize commandery capitals and forgo resources in order to maximize the number of faction unique M buildings you can build. Fortunately, his T variety can be built to tier 5 even in a level 1 settlement, which is the main exploit players should use to not only increase your county limits, but also bolster your income in the early game. Now once you get going, you would need to rely on vassals to control the map, which can be another challenge for inexperienced players. But ultimately, Liu Bao's campaign difficulty is just hard instead of very hard, as you simply don't have that many early game challenges in the 190 start. On the opposite end of the spectrum, Ma Teng is a faction that is rated as hard by CA, simply because the early game fight against Gongdu can be extremely difficult. But aside from this initial challenge, Ma Teng's campaign difficulty is quite easy from that point on, as his faction unique units are strong, and his starting location is flexible as you can either choose to take control of the northwest and then pump out cheap cavalry units to flood down your opponent with sheer numbers and charge damage, or you can expand south into the Shu lands and ultimately the Naman territory to take control of the coppers and spices there before returning north for the horses. Both are viable, as while the Naman factions are a pain to deal with, fighting them early with cavalry can be a blessing, and once you have defeated them, there's really no mid-game threats as most of the dominant factions are farther to the east, and instead of running up against Dong Zhuo where their faction is strong, you can use this southern expansion to wait out Dong Zhuo's death and then exploit their satisfaction issues under the Jewess control to pick up strong characters with the use of spy mechanics. Overall, while Ma Teng's late game can be quite easy, the early game is challenging, so a rating of normal seems fair in my opinion, as you simply can't get to that easy late game if Gongdu sets you back in Wudu. Then moving on, we have Liu Chong, who is probably the only character in the game who can safely solo entire armies as his show of force ability has no usage limits. Combine that with his two faction mechanics that has almost no downsides and two equally strong faction unique units, it's not surprising that CA has Neutron ranked as easy, which I agree, since you also can overpower everyone's main problem in Cao Cao in the early game, before Cao Cao gets enough schemes to be annoying. Moving on, we have another DLC faction in Liu Yan, but unlike his relative Liu Chong, Liu Yan's inheritance and aspiration mechanic is both difficult to use and not that strong even if you satisfy the inheritance requirements well. He does have a decent faction unique unit, but his starting location has him contending with Naman to the south and Gongdu to the north. And the new shallow mechanic also limits his trading options and his old age and the strategist skill tree overall makes Liu Yan quite a difficult faction to play, which is why I actually agree with CA's rating of hard for Liu Yan's campaign difficulty. Slightly in a better position, we have Shi Xie, who despite not having any faction unique units or buildings, actually has a much better starting position and arguably an easier and more reliable faction mechanic that offers a wider variety of bonuses that are often stackable to create even more powerful bonuses. In terms of starting position, while Shi Xie still has to deal with the Naman factions, there is only one direction that the threat can come from, 
And if you have Mulu under control, the rest of the way should be fairly easy. And with the ocean ports available, there are no shadows restricting trade and Shizia can trade with almost all of the map. So for these reasons, I think Shizia's campaign difficulty should actually be normal rather than CA's rating of hard. Now moving on to the bandit subculture, we start with Zheng Jiang, who does have a difficult starting position. But arguably, if you're going to be stuck in the north, the area around Hedong is probably where you want to be, as it's probably the best income commandery in the north with easy access to the spice and horses of the northwest. Even though the bandit roster suffer from a weak mid-game roster, Zheng Jiang's faction mechanic, once maxed out, can make all your units unbreakable, which is simply unfair. Add on her tribute-based economy, which is not restricted to vassals, but a unique diplomatic option for Zheng Jiang, the math is entirely in your favor, and you should be rolling in cash after a few successful wars. The key to Zheng Jiang is to win wars, but don't kill off the factions as they are worth so much more alive, paying you tributes indefinitely. So for these reasons, I think Zheng Jiang's campaign difficulty shouldn't be rated as very hard as CA has done, but rather just normal. And if Zheng Jiang is normal, then Yan Baihu is definitely easy as he starts out in the empty south with access to some of the best commanderies in the game. He also starts with multiple poison volley users or has ways to get multiple users really fast and a decent roster of unique units that comes with poison arrows and you can easily give them snipe from the bandit ability as long as you have some trees. And the AI armies just simply can't identify where the enemies are shooting from and those poison damage will do quick work against even the best units. Overall, Yan Bai Hu's only drawback is that his faction mechanic of forming large coalitions is extremely hard to pull off on higher difficulties. But even without these bonuses, his campaign difficulty is definitely easy in my opinion rather than the normal rating that CA has for him. Now the last bandit, Zhang Yan, is a very different story as while he has a very similar starting position and situation as Zheng Jiang, he simply doesn't have access to her amazing faction mechanic or her units. Instead, he can trigger offensive ambush battles, which plays well into his three faction unique units. However, since his units are designed for ambushes where they have high charge and scare, they're terrible in all other situations, which make defensive battles and mid-game battles such as siege battles quite difficult for Zhang Yan. For those reasons, I think Zhang Yan has one of the hardest campaigns out of the three bandits and should be rated as very hard, as his unique mechanic is really just offensive ambush and there's nothing else you can build from that and his headquarter building can only be in his capital and two of the three functions really doesn't work because the lack of interactions between yellow turbans and bandits so overall, I feel like Zhang Yan has the hardest time amongst the bandit subculture and should be rated as very hard instead of his hard rating by CA. Then moving on to the Nanman factions, we start with Sha Ke, who is rated as hard by CA, which I agree, not because his campaign is difficult, but mainly because his faction mechanic is poorly implemented when compared to the other three Nanman factions. Certainly, Shamoke is unique in that he can become a Han Emperor and pursue the Han victory condition, but his unification mandate is not balanced. The domination route is leaps and bounds better than the cooperation route, which makes the mechanic uninteresting, and the vassal mechanic in the game also makes it very hard for you to maintain large number of vassals, and it makes it rather unrewarding and even punishing to a certain degree. Additionally, Shamoke is the only Nunman faction to not start with any of the powerful animal units, and the starting location is only slightly decent because you are surrounded initially by Han Empire factions, but you do come into contact with most of the Han factions in the east, and by the mid-game, they're going to be tunneling on you while you are still contending with your tribes to the west, making it rather difficult for you to continue to expand. This is especially true if Sun Jian's faction get rolling. So I think the hard rating is justified. Then we have Mu Lu, who is rated as normal by C8, which once again, I have to agree, as Mu Lu has a pretty balanced start at the outskirts of the Naman territory to the south. Of course, as the king of the elephants, you have the most elephant units and a unique golden elephant mount to kickstart the early game since elephant units are extremely broken with micro dwell, 
It makes Mulu campaign quite easy, and the only drawback to his faction is his faction unique mechanic of rituals is not really that engaging or powerful, especially when you compare it to the last two Numan factions. So it's hard to rate Mulu as easy, but I think normal is a fair assessment, especially relative to the other three Numan factions. And speaking of the other Numan factions, we have Meng Huo, which is rated as easy by CA, and I'm going to agree here as well because you do have the best elephant unit in the game at the start, and you also have the best starting commandery on the map in Jianning. Combine the best faction mechanic for the Numan victory condition as you gain bonuses each time you get a tribe to swear their fealty to you, and once you have all the fealty on land, you hold that land and you just simply win the game from there. He is no doubt the easiest of all the Numan factions in the game, especially since you have a preset event to take control of Lady Zhurong's faction as well. And speaking of Lady Zhurong's faction, whose tiger units did get nerfed in the game, the starting location is still quite nice deep in the jungles. She also has early access to followers of the flame and eventually fire archers pretty early on which are both strong against pretty much every other Numan infantry in the game as they are flammable. Although her faction mechanics can be tricky to use, the combat bonuses from them are all very powerful. And speaking of powerful, she has the strongest weapon in the game in the Flaming Mace, which can help her or her brother Dai Lai win any duel. And to be honest, her starting location is essentially the same as Meng Huo, as you can easily beat him down and take control of the best commander in the game. And you end up with pretty much Meng Huo's faction, except you have a better faction mechanic to go along with it. So since I rated Meng Huo as easy, I think Lady Zhurong is also going to be easy instead of the normal rating that CA has for her. Lastly, we have the three Yellow Turban factions, starting with Huang Shao, who is rated as very hard by CA. But I think this rating is from before the faction leader revamp was done, as after the revamp, Huang Shao has become immensely more powerful with the faction-wide stock, which really changes how the game is played as the AI can be easily manipulated with vision. But at the same time, the starting location is still a challenging one with land on both sides of the Yellow River, which will attract the attention of both Cao Cao and Yuan Shao to declare war on you quite early on. So with these factors combined, I think Huang Shao probably should have a normal campaign difficulty rating. Meanwhile, He Yi is rated hard by CA, but I think he is one of the easiest factions to play in the game, as you instantly start with max replenishment between his faction leader background bonus and the Yellow Turban Forge buildings. And once you do have max replenishment, the fights become much more forgiving. On top of that, He Yi can take advantage of using cheap, high damage glass cannon peasant unit with his ability that boosts evasion. And what you have is essentially a swarming campaign of peasants that is only limited by the number of characters you can recruit into your court which is not that bad in the 190 start date as you have two other Yellow Turban factions to pick up characters from once they are destroyed. You also have access to the unbreakable Youxia units right away, so all things considered, He Yi should be rated as easy as he is also the best faction to attempt that this is Total War achievement with. On the other end of the spectrum, Gongdu is rated as very hard by CA as his starting position is brutal very much like Ma Teng's start, as these two factions are destined to fight each other early on in Wudu. And once you beat Ma Teng, you still have to contend with the likes of Dong Zhuo and Liu Yan, who are on opposite sides of your starting location. However, if you do survive this opening, the vast wealth of the Western land, which we already talked about, is yours for the taking. Overall, I think the Yellow Turban factions as a whole are all very strong in the game when compared to the other subcultures mainly due to how good Yellow Turban character skill trees are when it comes to faction-wide bonuses. So even with this difficult start, I think the very hard label is simply too harsh, and that Gongdu should be rated as just hard. And with that, the tier list is finished. Now, I'm quite certain this tier list is probably the most subjective tier list that I have done, as I probably have skewed most of the ratings towards the easier side, given that I have over 2,500 hours playing the game. So nothing really seems that hard now, but I did try to make an effort to consider things from the average player's perspective. Hopefully this tier list can help newer players decide their next campaign, as I feel CA's ratings are slightly off. So if you found this tier list interesting and helpful, I would appreciate it if you can hit that like button to help support the channel. And I'll see you all next time, as the tier list series will return soon with a tier list of all the characters 
that deserve unique artworks and recognition in the next installment of the game. So until then, bye!